Hello and welcome to to whatever this is. I am joined by the lovely Brooklyn Spring Valley. Tal, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm good. How are you doing today? I am also good. I, I should probably mention how we know each other because to my audience, this probably seems like a very random thing to do. Um, I got <laughs> mad at one of your videos and messaged you on Twitter, I think? Yes. I wasn't yes. expecting an so, answer. I believe I woke up one morning, checked my Twitter DMs and saw you saying something along the lines of, Hi, I'm a big fan, but I just wanted to call you out on your latest video. I harass lots of people on Twitter and I usually don't get responses. <laughs> It was, it was one of those moments where I was like, is this what my life has become? I'm arguing with a, a porn star about One Piece on Twitter. I like to argue. My partner also likes to argue. We have spirited debates about topics of mutual interest, primarily anime and whether various characters could beat each other up. Oh, so you're a power scaling couple. Yes. And uh, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? My name is Brooklyn. I go by Brooke normally. I am 34. I have three dogs, they are my only children, and I live in Texas, in the United States. Now you did mention uh, the all-important D word, tell me more about your dogs, that's a topic I'm very invested in. Same. Our first dog we got from my mother-in-law, he is a Wheaton Terrier and he is named Vegeta because he's blonde <laughs> and purebred. The next dog we got came with a microchip from the shelter, so we named him Android 17. And then uh, my two other dogs is Piccolo and... Uh, Boo. Right, so all obviously Dragon Ball themed. <laughs> yes, we decided to keep on brand once we named the first one. Well, you know what? I think let's get straight into the juicy stuff, eh? So how did you end up in the depraved, salacious, taboo world of anime? Um, let's see. My partner and I have been together since we were like 15. And we grew up on the east coast of the States and there was a huge mall. It's literally like four or five stories uh, just filled with shops. And one of them was a Japanese bookstore. They sold insane amounts of the most adorable stationery in the world, delicate pens and manga in Japanese and English. I bought um, a bunch of first edition, like not first editions, dear God, uh, first issues <laughs> of collected stuff. Roni Kenshin, Bleach, Naruto, Dragon Ball, you did mention Naruto and Bleach, and I know you're a One Piece fan, so whenever someone has seen the, uh, the Holy Trinity, I have to ask the question, can you rank them best to worst? First place, best, is One Piece. And second place, Midam, is One Piece, and last is One Piece filler, and the other two are very bad. I, I didn't expect the perfect answer, but I got it. <laughs> yeah, um, Naruto started out okay, and I do really like the manga, but the filler in the anime is so absurd and ridiculous, and also I didn't like the ending. Also, I didn't like the sequel, so I have complaints. I was gonna say, speaking of filler, Bleach is a notorious offender of filler in the anime. I just, ugh. I love the character designs. It's very beautiful and very sharp, um, but I do not care for the story and I will probably never finish it. It was very good. Bleach was one of probably my favorite of the big three for quite a while until One Piece very quickly took over. It's like, I can tell you how I got into One Piece. We had a couple of the mangas, but I didn't really read that one or care about it particularly much. I was like, this is kind of neat. Maybe I'll get to it later. And then in 2014, uh, a friend of mine who lives here in Texas said, hey guys, we have the same days off from work. He was like, why don't we take every Sunday and we'll just do one piece all day. We'll start from the beginning. And he's like, I really want to watch it in Japanese. And I was like, okay. And we just finished. We just caught up. I watched episode 1004. I have to ask, uh, who is your favorite One Piece character? My favorite One Piece character of everyone is Bartolomeo. I hated him when he was introduced. Nice. <laughs> and then like four episodes later, Oda got me. And then he did the same thing with Beige and his, I don't remember his name, but his long tongued sidekick who turned out to be some uh, sort of crazy German nerd. Um, like, Vito, I think his name was, Vito? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, but yes, Barty is my favorite. I have actually, yeah. here I have Barty with a little oh, hello, Vegeta Bartolomeo. chain necklace. <laughs> and then I also like Buggy and Frankie. Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned Frankie because there's something quite notable about you, which is that you have this phenomenal Frankie tattoo, I believe. Yeah. Yep. It is ow, his ow, ow. <laughs> free time skip, Jolly Roger. And my partner has in the same spot on his arm the post-time skip Jolly Roger. 
I was gonna say I also have a chopper because I saw yours in the background, but he's dressed like Buggy. <laughs> I need to see this. I'm only like five foot. I can't reach anything. This is my Buggy Buggy chopper. Oh, he is so adorable. I have never seen that chopper. Find yours looks like chopper. he's pre-time skip, right? Yes. His eyebrows look slightly more evil. He, he, uh, he's a bit, uh, <laughs> So do you have a favorite One Piece arc? I, this is controversial <laughs> even amongst my friends, but I love Thriller Bark. Ooh, that was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, defend yourself, I guess. Um, I've always been into horror stuff. Everything about that arc is both terrifying and hilarious. Um... Just like the whole existential crisis of never seeing the sun again and having your corpse and or shadow stolen. Also the invisible dude. And then Nami's friendship with Absalom, that's the name I can think of it. Uh, Nami's friendship with Lola, which it's tied. Thriller bark and whole cake. <laughs> Because the whole time I was like, beige is dumb. And then whole cake happened and I was like, beige is the best. <laughs> and I love his tiny pacifier, cigar wielding baby. And I love his wife and everyone's great. And I'm still mad at pudding for erasing Sanji's memory, so. Pudding aside, that's that, that's, a, that's a topic. Um, Oda's never I gonna let Sanji be happy and I've just come to terms with that, so. <laughs> that's, uh, sorry Sanji, that's just how it is. Well, that. That was controversial, and now I have to ask, what is your most controversial anime opinion in general? Attack on Titan is bad. Oh, yeah, that'll get you some, some problems. <laughs> I had a horrible experience watching the first episode, although in its defense it was not the episode's fault, but uh, it didn't pick up after that. I was on medication at the time, um, post-surgery, ah. and I was very messed up from it, and I was eating a bowl of soup, which when the first Titan appeared with a bwong and a crash, it scared the bejesus out of me, and I spilled soup all over myself, <laughs> and then I was convinced I didn't own any more shirts, and I didn't know what to do. So it was a rough first episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, not not the ideal conditions to be watching Attack on Titan under, I, I will say. <laughs> I might have to say, um, I don't know if it's controversial. I'm not into the fandoms, generally. I've just sort of existed in a bubble. Um, honestly, until I started watching your videos. I still remember the first one I saw. I was like, wow, that... Dude's voice is super annoying. <laughs> now I listen to it when I go to sleep. I like put it on and I'm like, ah oh, oh. yes, the soothing sounds of Australian One Piece. I, I get that a fair bit actually, people using me as like ASMR. Then. If it helps, I find my voice annoying still to this very day. I have done several interviews and I can never watch them because my recording voice, I sound like not at all like what I sound like in my brain and I'm like, no, that's enough. As a, uh, a now seasoned anime veteran, do you have a particular favorite waifu or husbando? Uh, I have a very specific husband. <laughs> there is a movie in which Zoro wears sweatpants. Zoro really rocks sweatpants. Uh, so do you have hobbies outside of the world of anime? I do. Um, I really love puzzles, although sometimes that overlaps with anime because I have a Dragon Ball one I haven't finished yet. How many pieces? Minimum a thousand. I don't need to be doing dinky puzzles. There's no point in wasting my time. <laughs> um, yeah, you're a serious puzzler. And then I play um, like puzzle slash hidden object games. If I find the plot sufficiently entertaining. Um, someone gifted me one for Christmas that is set in a world where you are a detective that solves mysteries related to fairy tales. And this fairy tale is somehow based on the swan princess and the ugly duckling at the same time. I haven't finished it yet because I've been streaming it on Twitch, so I don't want to skip ahead, but... You did mention Twitch, and I need to mention that I was looking at your link tree earlier. And it seems like you have an account on just about every platform on the internet. It's almost like you're collecting social media. People just keep being on different things, so to follow with my friends when we do collabs, I end up getting new accounts. Like, I didn't have a TikTok for the longest time, but then I worked with this dude who makes balloon dresses, and he has a TikTok, so we made a bunch of TikToks, and then I had a TikTok. How do you keep up with all of them? I have enough trouble with just, like, YouTube and Twitter. Those two, like, almost overwhelm me. This is my full-time job, but it is not only my full-time job. I answer a lot of the messages, but the posting is usually done 
done by my partner because there's two of us and this is our full-time job. Excellent. So Brooklyn Spring Valley is a, a coalition of two people. Technically, he has his own socials as well, but he helps. He photographs me and edits things. All right. So uh, switching gears now, when did you begin to work in your current industry and what inspired that beginning? Okay. We have time travel. Back to 2015. I lost 100 pounds and this caused some shape to change right here in this region. Uh, I went from having like double D's to having weird flat double D's that hung straight down, which I did not like. And it made me very sad. Uh, so I got a boob job. It was not this one. It was my previous boob job. This is the second one. First time- uh, I, I wasn't aware that you could um, stack boob jobs. <laughs> I will explain this in more detail as we go on. But the first time, due to my weight loss, my skin was sort of like delicate. So they could only go up to a certain size, which wasn't even as big as my previous size, really, <laughs> for safety reasons. Um, and they looked weird and they felt weird. And I also had an allergic reaction to the antibiotic tape they put on me. So I looked like a scaly dragon who was dying. And I felt very uncomfortable in my body still. And my partner, Zeus, said, let's you know, you have a little Instagram where you post your outfits, so let's make you a Reddit. You can link them, people can see your outfits, and then you can post on like Gone Mild or Gone Wild or whatever, and people tell you that it looks great. So I posted on Gone Wild, just one pic, and they immediately banned me for advertising. They would not unban me, and they swore up and down that I was doing porn. So I said, fine, now I will. Uh, that was in 2018. <laughs> You've pushed me to this. This is your doing. <laughs> I just jumped right in and started filming any weird idea the two of us had. My favorite one from that time period is I was Mrs. Claus and I needed to extract material to make new elves. Just any absurd thing we thought of, <laughs> we would do. <clears throat> Which is the fun of being a home business because when I go film professionally with studios, Super boring. No elf production with the studios. It's very much like a set series of events that always happen, although maybe not in the same order, but like everybody knows what to do and the director will just like call out a position. It, they say, it's very interesting the way that you were saying it. It makes the shoot sound like you're at a yoga class or something. You're like, all right, class, this position. Now this one, this one. My first shoot with Brazzers was a yoga scene. <laughs> And they waited until I was dressed and everything was ready to ask, because I was supposed to be the yoga teacher. They were, then that was when they were like, wait, do you know how to do yoga? And I was like, <laughs> not the correct time to ask me this question, but yes, I have taken several yoga classes. There's not a lot of preparation for the roles then? Oh no. Uh, sometimes I don't even know who I'm filming with ahead of time, depending on if somebody's plane gets like derailed or whatever. But I get there, we meet up, we talk about whatever the scene is, we uh, get dressed and I get my hair and makeup done on professional sets. Um, and then they spray me with this stuff that's supposed to keep the makeup in place and it doesn't work. Do they have to, how do I put this? Do they have to spray you because you're like under particularly hot lights and there's a lot of sweat or is it for like other liquid based reasons? Um, It's primarily the lights. It's fine when we're doing the photography, which is what normally happens first. Uh, because we can keep the AC running, but when you are filming, the AC has to be off because otherwise you can hear it always. Oh, speaking of. <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know if Thanks for the home. reminder. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, yeah, so once you start filming, you are jumping around, swapping positions, getting very sweaty, and then also there's like four or five hot lights on you. It just, nothing helps. <laughs> I'd have to have my makeup tattooed on, I think. Uh, so outside of working with said studios, uh, you're primarily a freelance operator, aren't you? Uh, what kind of activities does does that entail? I wake up in the morning, I check my messages on every damn social media platform. <laughs> mm, that's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have a posting schedule throughout the day for my stories, like on Snapchat and Instagram. Then at noon, I do a major post on Instagram that I monitor and interact with the comments because it like keeps your account higher in the rankings of being shown to people. Then I also usually released a post on my three major sites for, it'll be like nude or lewd. Although sometimes it's just cosplay. I do stuff for my YouTube channel. I'm learning to play the ukulele so people can watch me fail at that. I make ASMR content and I do makeup tutorials. Oh wow, okay. That was a broad range of things I wasn't quite expecting. Right? <laughs> the YouTube channel is yeah. just, non-related stuff entirely just things that i like to do 
<laughs> so speaking of, of sort of that, but I guess the opposite of that, I've discovered that on this website, you need like a really solid narrow niche to, to truly succeed. And I was just wondering if that was the same of uh, models and actors in your particular industry. The answer is kind of. Due to the size that I have currently from my second surgery, oh, I never went back and explained that. I forgot. Basically, um, once my first surgery had healed for two years and everything was good, and also they put, this sounds insane to say, um, they put decellularized pig skin in my boob. It's like an internal bra that holds everything and makes sure my skin doesn't have any issues. From a pig, but it's like lab, lab pig and they strip it of all the pig stuff and then your little human cells move in like it's an apartment so it, oh good question so many questions it, the way i understand it is it's sort of like you've created an organic bra mm -hmm. within yourself yep yeah that Fast. is correct but due to this size i am in a partial niche already the bigger you go the more ridiculous it becomes i met a woman in california who could sit her six-year-old on her like it was a bench like you couldn't even see me when i stood behind her it was absurd so much boob surely that surely there's a point where you get to a critical mass of boob where you stop doing being able to do things like walking through doors and that is and what i asked her and she was like i have like 12 kids so if i need to reach something i can't get one of them gets it for me <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but yes, having a niche helps and having it be something you like to do also helps because some people go into something since someone asked them to and then more people ask them to and it's making them money and they don't even like it that much, which I don't recommend. <laughs> I, I also don't recommend that. Um, I think our industries are shockingly similar in that regard. All performance related. We're all content creators in the end. That is what I put on forms when I have to fill out things that ask what my job is. Uh, because there isn't a category for a porn star. No, fun fact, there's also not a category for YouTuber either. I always have to make up some kind of crap like, uh, I work in online marketing for a, a video production firm. We ha Before we got to a point where we could just explain things to people because I still worked in an office and I was trying to keep things as DL as I could, we would be like, uh, yes, we are video editors and producers. I make videos on the internet. Correct. <laughs> uh, Which didn't... is something I've stopped telling people because it immediately makes them think that I do porn. <laughs> but people at work still found out because I have tattoos and also I did not hide my face at any point. Some of the other people were just like, um, I saw your videos, I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, I have to say, I've had um, a shockingly similar experience. People like find me on YouTube without me telling them. And they, they come up to me like that and like, so I saw your videos. And it's just, it's the most awkward thing. It, it, it my, may as well be in uh, an adult film. Aside from people who already knew me, I've only been recognized twice in public. God bless. Awkwardly transitioning back to something else sorry got distracted. I can't think of a I can't think of a good transition <laughs> uh does your work ever cause problems with your personal life um I definitely have some friends who like know what I do but they're like that's cool and please never talk about anything in front of me whatsoever um so I try to stick to that to avoid problems what is the weirdest thing you've ever been able to claim on tax commissioned art of me a lot of it, actually, because prints are for sale in various locations. And I'm sure we'll have a link to a link to those various locations in the description if you're interested in Brooklyn Spring Valley's tax write-offs. <laughs> <laughs> and so a question I, I did want to ask, along with all of the others I've already asked, is uh, how big is this, or well, is there even an overlap between like anime and porn? Like, do you show up on set? Do people recognize your tattoo? Or do you just... So remember how I said I got recognized at a convention one time? It was an 18 plus only anime convention. <laughs> so there is a huge overlap and right. lots of the work I do involves anime cosplay. Right, so bringing this back around to the topic that, you know, interests me more than anything in the world, what are you looking forward to most in One Piece? Oh, okay. I honestly, it's so hard to choose. In general for the story, I'm so excited to find out. They better tell me more about Joy Boy. Like, and then for like smaller stuff, I want 
loads of Jinbei and Robin hanging out because they are a hilarious team. Watching them just stroll through Onigashima like miles behind everyone else where they wear sunglasses. Hilarious. Yes, exactly. They were like the two parents watching the children run off to play. So yes, those two things. <laughs> Void Century slash Joy Boy and Robin and Jibbe hanging out. And now I have the most important question of all for you. What is the One Piece? <sighs> I mean, I'm pretty sure Oda has conclusively said it's not the friends we made along the way. I think the current general consensus in this house is based on all the flashbacks with Roger, maybe it's another ancient weapon that works with the other three because it's important that Shirohoshi's alive and that Luffy has someone who knows how to build um, Pluton. I forget which one's which. Yeah. I think that's as good an answer as any really since none of us have any idea whatsoever. All right, well, as an, an amateur interviewer, I don't know how to win this, so I'm just going to say thank you so much, Brooklyn, uh, for your time here today. Your insights have been profound. Um, that's pretty standard. I've done about <laughs> seven or eight interviews, um, although most less fun because I don't get to talk about anime as much, and you just say, like, thank you for being here today. I mean, I can, I can do that. Thank you for being here today. And of course, if you want to check Brooklyn out, she does everything on every platform. So we'll have a link to the link tree in the description. Something. You just, you look, it'll be there. Yes. Probably my Instagram. That's the safest place to send anyone. Cool. Done. Instagram.